So was Queen Consort Camilla always in the cards um, going to be queen? Was that always the way it was going to happen and this was Diana's destiny? Or was it some interference? That's what the video will be about. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching and happy 2023. Wow. I'm Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. You know, he was in love with her always, Charles uh, that is always in love with her it was always going to be in his mind Camilla uh, he was she was always going to be at least a mistress and um, that was inevitable but did she have the idea that she could supplant Diana was she involved in moving Diana out of the way uh, or was this just Charles and was it at any cost and I want to know if he felt some relief actually when Diana was gone so tough questions kind of ugly to ask but let's ask them um here we go don't you want to know i kind of do so we're going to use this touchstone tarot by cat black for this reading and they're very regal cards as a matter of fact yeah i i can't imagine that uh, Diana would have been a terrific queen. And uh, why? Why did things work out this way? Why is it that Charles ends up with Camilla as queen of the United Kingdom? And um, was, was there involvement by Camilla in uh, pushing her out at any cost? Um, I don't say that Camilla you know, knew anything about Diana dying. But when that happened, what was the feeling there? Was, was, were, were Charles and Camilla like, well, that was bad, but, you know, now. So that's what I want to know. I want to kind of delve into the recesses of these people's minds. Um, what is going on there? What is being king and queen of the United Kingdom to Charles and Camilla. Before we do anything, let's have just a moment of meditation. I don't know that these are even questions that can be answered, but um, you know, you have to wonder uh, about the mindset of these people as these things are going on. Every single time that Charles ran to Camilla, you know, how did he justify that? Every time that Camilla uh, was in bed with Charles, leaving her husband and kids at home, what's her feeling of that? How do the British people reconcile in their minds? Uh, that that's exactly what was going on. Um, was Camilla the evil queen or is she now the evil queen? And uh, with all the evil that's going on in the world right now, what justifies these kind of actions? Um, let's take a f the first, let's start out with just a few one or two or three card draws just to kind of focus in on the mindset of Camilla, Charles, and maybe even the British um, collective mindset. First question, when Charles was doing this, when he was committing these um, these offenses against his marriage, um, did he feel guilt? One card. Well, we have the tower card. So it's disaster. But what disaster is it? Is it Charles's disaster for his future? Um, was he uh, worried about the disaster that might befall the monarchy? But he still put himself above the monarchy, didn't he? So it was disaster. 
Uh, so every time he was involved in this, he was aware of the potential toppling of the crown. Every single time. That's the answer to that. Next question, Camilla. So Camilla, were her intentions always, always just selfish and greedy? That's what it looks like. One card. The Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is uh, typically having to walk away from something that's of emotional importance to you. And she had to almost walk away from her, her traditional life, her husband, her kids. Although, apparently, the whole time that this was going on, from the beginning of the marriage, you know, uh, her husband was cheating on her. And what would you do if you knew your wife was betting with someone else and there's nothing you could do about it? So I don't blame the husband of Camilla, even a little bit. But walking away from all this emotional import, and, um, and she did. She did for her own selfish reasons. The British public. The British public. How is it that the British public can justify in their minds what happened? What was going on? The result of all this, how is it that the British people can justify this in their own minds? One card. The Emperor. Everything, everything um, defaults to the wishes of the Emperor, the King. So the British people have such high regard for that position of monarch that whatever the monarch wants, apparently, the majority maybe not the overwhelming majority, but the majority, even if it's by a few, yeah, will default to the wishes of the monarch. That's interesting. So let's do a, a, a six card dyadic cross on th two things at least. The first thing I want to say is, was this always I mean, they put so much hope, Charles and Camilla, they put so much intention into the outcome that they had of being together. Not necessarily Diana dying, but I mean, when you put that much intention to something, you better be prepared for the worst consequence. And how what we've learned um, in world events in my lifetime is that if you have enough ill intention, uh, those consequences are going to come about. I mean, you can, it almost seems like you could wish something um, untoward uh, to take place. It's happened and is happening. So six cards to kind of get the mindset of Charles and Camilla uh, before the point that uh, the split uh, was finalized between him and Diana. So this is Charles and Camilla up to that point. Let's see what six cards can tell us about that. So one two, three, four, five, and six. Six cards for Charles and Camilla, their mindset, the overall ruling factor in their brains, uh, up until the point that Charles was finally free of Diana. Signifier card. Seven of coins. Had they done enough? Well, that makes sense, had you done enough. Had they done enough to... Um, try to make sure that they could be together rather than take the suggestions of um, those in power, which would be to put their love aside and, um, and bring some innocent Diana into this situation. So that at least shows a conscious, okay? Having a conscious, uh, feeling, un, uh, feeling bad about that. The challenge to this, we're talking about Charles and Camilla up to the point that Diana was finally going to be out of the picture. Okay, the Ace of Wands. So this Ace is very interesting. You no know, Wands are actions, plans, forward movements. This is an angel. But look at the, the look of this angel. She's almost sarcastic. You can see her wings right now, right now just outside. But this angel, this Ace of Wands, was a great big... And look, this wand is fruitful. It has a tiny little buds a bit beginning to flourish. This Ace of Wands, the challenge to had they done enough, was greater than... This is just a simple 
uh, pip card, the seven of coins, have I done enough? But this is the ace. This is a great big wand of, we're gonna make this happen. So this tells me that whatever regrets they had during that period, up to the time that uh, Diana was out of the picture, whatever regrets they had, this overwhelming, um, you know, wanting to make this happen was always um, flooded into their scene. I guess it was love with a good dose of selfishness. The base of this, then, with this five of coins, is being left out in the cold. So the basis of this whole thing, and it makes sense, uh, Charles left out in the cold from his love to Camilla. Camilla left out in the cold for her love to Charles. Uh, Diana left out in the cold, period, being trampled on uh, by the wishes of those other two and being used by the monarchy for the purpose of producing an heir and putting up a, de a front uh, for the, uh, the public. So being left out in the cold is the basis of this whole thing, and it makes perfect sense. The past of this, we're talking about Charles and Camilla primarily, up until the point Diane is out of the picture. Whew. Okay. So this is the Ten of Swords. Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the Ten of Swords is the complete end of a cycle. Remember we said, now this is the past of that, um, that t period of time. The period of time between when Charles and Camilla were just dying to be together, poor choice of words, um, but right up to the point when Dinah was pushed out. And what this is telling us is that there was always going to be a hard, devastating stop. The sky of this reading, the fool, a new journey. Well, it is a new journey. And I have to say the monarchy has a history of, or monarchs have a history of doing what they darn well want to do um, regardless of what's in the best interest of the uh, of the public personally in their personal life okay at least so the fools were determined to start that journey and the uh, final outcome with this five of wands was always going to be wands are actions plans forward movement and the five of wands is pointless arguing and look at this very smug um, I would say he's a prince uh, with his wand just holding to his side, knowing that his plan would eventually come to pass. Even if he had to wait until he became king, I think he would have eventually pushed Diana out. So the, the final outcome was always going to be that. I'll read this quickly again, and then we'll do another uh, six-card uh, layout. Uh, so we got right here the seven of coins, Charles and Camilla, up to the point that Diana was pushed out. Well, wondering if they'd done enough. Thinking back to the beginning of their relationship, uh, and uh, Camilla selfishly marrying while Charles went off, you know, not waiting. And you have to wonder if she didn't just play him all that time. I've got some thoughts about that as far as Wallace Simpson and um, uh, King Edward, who abdicated. Uh, I think she was playing with him too. And, uh, and then she was stuck with the result, just like Camilla is. But it came out perfectly well for Camilla in the end. So had they done enough? The uh, challenge to it was always this overwhelming want of a plan to make it happen at almost any cost. The basis of this thing is being left out in the cold. Everyone was left out in the cold. Diana, Charles, Camilla, they were all left out in the cold. And the uh, past of that situation at that time was that there was always going to be a hard stop. And then the fools were going to start off on this new journey. And then the final outcome here with this five of wands is all that pointless um, arguing and um, conflict uh, was always in control and going to be dominated by the Prince of Wales. Always. It was always going to be like that. So now let's go up to the point to when they're divorced, Camilla's divorced. Now they know that they have, you know, a future in sight. They know that the monarch's main tool, their main power, is to be patient and to play a waiting game. And that eventually uh, memories would fade. And uh, But as long as Diana was in the picture, she was determined to stay in the picture. You know what? Let's do, let's do this. Let's do three cards on Diana. She knew that even though she was out of uh, the monarchy, 
that uh, she could always remain a thorn in the side of Charles and was that always her intention to do that? Let's try one card and see if we need to get a couple more. Diana, was she, even though she was out at this point, at this point, did she always know that she was going to stay in the spotlight, um, if not necessarily to do good, but maybe to um, adjacent to doing good, uh, remain a thorn in Charles and Camilla's side? One card for that. The Queen of Cups. That's what they call her, the Queen of Hearts. Cups are hearts. And uh, so she knew full well the power that she had as the Queen of Hearts. She did. And this queen looks a little smug, a little vindictive, I think. Now, after the divorce, but before the death, it was a waiting game. After the divorce, but before the death, it was a waiting game. Let's just do six cards on Charles and Camilla after the door divorce, but before the death of Diana. Six cards. One, two, three, okay, four, five, six. Charles and Camilla after the divorces. I should say divorces, shouldn't I? but before the death. What can the cards tell us about that? After the divorces and before the death, we have the six of coin. Coins are value, and the, this, uh, the six of coin is typically distributing that value. They knew that they had to come to some point to distribute that value between Diana and Camilla. Get that value evened out, okay? Diana had the lion's share, and they had to find a way that Camilla would get an equal footing. So that's the signifier card of after the divorce, but before the death. The challenge to that is right here in this Five of Cups, and again, it's an emotional, cups are emotions, compassion, and it's the emotional spilling of, of all of that compassion. But this person is ready to wipe it up and that's not always the way that this Five of Cups is re represented in Rider Waite decks. So this fella, this king, this male uh, entity here, is ready to wipe up those emotions and get on with what's left, which is Charles and Camilla. So it, he's, he's recognized that it's spilled, he's ready to clean it up and move on. And that's the challenge to uh, getting that balance. The base of that period between the divorces and before the death is this two of wands short-term plans. Well, there were always short-term plans. Wands are action plans, forward movement. There were fruitful plans, as you can see, by all the leaves sprouting out here. And um, so, yeah, so the basis of this whole thing was patience, waiting for those plans to come to fruition. The past of that period between um, the divorces and the death, King of Swords, truth, justice, rules, law, more than this is Charles, I feel like this is the monarchy, but you notice that it's in the past position. The truth, the justice, the rules, the law is in the past. So in the, in the thinking of this, it wasn't even a present uh, consideration. It wasn't a present point of importance. It was put to the side. The sky of this, again, Ten of Swords. Love when the cards repeat because it tells me they understand how I'm going to read it. And in the sky of this thing, be after the divorces and before the death, this period was always going to have a definite stop. Just being divorced uh, wasn't going to be the end of it. There had to be a definitive stop to that uh, era, actually. That was the death of Diana. And the final outcome, after the divorces, before the death, is this ace of coins reaching for all the value that you can get. So we'll read it again. So after the divorce, before the death, uh, we had the six of coins trying to find a way to balance out that value, to distribute the value and make it more even. And it was challenged by um, this, um, this has to be Charles to be willing to wipe up the uh, spilt emotions of what had happened to carry on with the two cups of compassion that were left. And you can't deny that these two people were meant to be together 
sad that it was at any cost. And then the uh, basis of the whole thing were the short-term plans, step by step by step, to come to a point to build uh, Camilla and diminish Diana. And then the uh, past in this, in the thinking of all of this, was that any uh, uh, will that the monarchy had for truth, justice, rules, and law was in the past. The thinking it was just pushed to the side. The sky of this is that the only way that this would continue on the way it has now is that that, that dead end stop uh, had to happen. And then the um, likely outcome of the whole thing then, with this ace of coins, is reaching for that coin, reaching for that value, and taking it in hand. And that's exactly what this couple did. I don't know if we have one more question in here. Let me think about it for a minute. Um, so now we've got to the point before the death, let's say after the death of Diana, I want to know honestly. I want to know for Charles and Camilla when they were completely by themselves in the darkness of a room, sitting down, going over in their own brain what had transpired over that, what was it, 15 years or so? I don't know how old the kids were. About that, I think, uh, between the marriage and the end. Um, each of them, I'm going to do three cards for each of them. One set for Charles, one set for Camilla. Uh, in their own brains in complete solitude were they glad three cards for Charles three cards for Camilla in their pri most private moments where they didn't have to show any sort of public face or even to each other, were they glad? Charles. First card up, Page of Cups. It shows Charles here holding this cup of compassion with a surprise jumping out. This is his love. This is his finally getting what he wants, but look at the, the smelly fish of a surprise that it brought with it. Second card for Charles, in his most private moments, did he feel like this had to happen? Wow. So the four of swords, swords of truth, justice, rules, and law, and this uh, warrior, still Charles, understanding that it was time to lay down and not get up at risk of getting stabbed by that truth, justice, rules, and law. Okay. Final card for Charles after the death of Diana. Queen of Wands, getting something done. This is Camilla. She was always whispering in his ear, we have to wait. The time will come. We'll just hold on to our plan. Look at this queen has even got a black cat in her lap. So this is Charles. So Charles, after the death and before they could finalize their union, it was uh, this page of cups he was here holding his cup of compassion he finally had it but it had an ugly surprise inside didn't it he knew it was a waiting game and someone was whispering in his ear that yes it'll come the time will come now Camilla in her most private moments her most private in the dark when she's going over all of this in her brain what are her feelings inside the ace of cups Look, this is, and it's also a cup. This is a great big offer of love. The dove. She is finally, you know what? I think she was just in her most private times, regardless of how it happened, she was very happy that she had her cup of emotion and looking for that dove of peace for all of it. Camilla after the death and before they finalized their union. The Knight of Cups, look at this. Charles is represented again as the fighter for his uh, passion. And the final card, with this Two of Cups, Two Cups of Compassion, this shows that they finally made that union. So in Camilla's quietest, in the dark moments, it was all still Finally, we have each other. 
So there was never any consideration or compassion for what they had done to an innocent. Very difficult read. I'm kind of sorry that I did it, but that's what I got. What do you think? Was that, was that reasonable? If you want to know about, more about these cards, hang on because I'll talk about them in a minute. And please remember to subscribe if you like this video and like it. Make some comments, tell me what you want me to read on, and heck, I'll read on that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Okay, so these are, again, some amazing cards. The Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black, who's an Australian artist. She lives in, on the western, uh, southwestern, I think, part of Australia. But the box is so great, you really feel like you got something worthwhile in that. The instruction booklet is um, is very good, as a matter of fact. It's not in color, but it's got some really good uh, ideas for divination. Tells you a little bit about the artist, so that's handy. And then the cards. I mean, look how beautiful they are. Even just the back is gilding. You can feel that gilding right there. But the front, these cards are not hard to decipher, but they really focus in on the face. Of You'll notice all of these are, you know, from the bust up from the waist almost up so they really make you identify with the face when you're trying to make the interpretation cat black is amazing um i don't know how uh, she came up with this but she came with some beautiful beautiful artwork and all digital so there's not a painting somewhere that looks like this of course these are made from actual uh, paintings and you know i i do this so that everybody can look at these cards and maybe you don't get to see uh, kind of different kind of cards and, um, and this gives you that opportunity. I always wanted to see what the tarot readers were using, what the cards looked like when I was uh, only just uh, being a viewer. Coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again, so ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.